Okay, this is video number five for chapter three. Um, it doesn't look like your normal format, but we're just going to do it together on this page as notes. This is special cases of one-step equations. So when we have to deal with some fractions and some negatives, um, when we're solving. So let's start. If you see one-fifth times a number, like one-fifth of 40, one-fifth times 40, I could do that out, and I can write it like my fractions and multiply the top numbers, multiply the bottom numbers, and you'll see that what we really get is just 40 being divided by 5. So 1 fifth of 40 means I'm actually just dividing by that 5. And let's do 1 sixth of 36. Well, 1 sixth times 36 gives me 36 over 6. I'm really just taking 36 and I'm dividing by that denominator. And 1 fourth of negative 20. Well, 1 fourth times negative 20 just gives me negative 20 divided by 4. So there's a shortcut, there's a trick. When you multiply by fractions, you're actually just dividing by that denominator each time. So we're going to use that in this section. So if x is being multiplied by a fraction, like 1 fifth x, I can think of that as x over 5, x being divided by 5. Or 1 sixth of x, I can rewrite it just as x divided by 6. And 1 fourth of x could be written like that. So now in 7th grade, we're going to show division with a bar, with that fraction bar. That's how we're going to show that we're dividing by something. So we're probably not going to use this guy, that symbol, very much anymore. Okay. So we know we talked about in the last video that when I'm solving equations, I use the inverse operation to cancel things out. Okay, so if I have 1 fifth of x equals 4 as an equation, I can rewrite that. That's just going to be x being divided by 5, right, dividing by that denominator, equals 4. And to cancel it out, inverse of dividing by 5 would be to multiply both sides by 5. So cross out what cancels. I showed the work on both sides. x would be equal to 20. So this is a way to get rid of fractions in your problem. Rewrite it. So again, this one would be like x over 3. x is being divided by 3. And then the inverse of dividing by 3 would be to multiply by 3. Cross out what cancels, and x is equal to 24. Or how about this one with a negative fraction? Well, it's still just negative x over 7. Or I can think of that as x being divided by negative 7. It's probably easier if I think of the negative down here. Remember we talked about in a fraction, it doesn't matter if the negative's on the top or the bottom or just out front. It's just a negative. But if I put it down here, now I can see that divide, or sorry, multiplying by negative 7 on both sides would cancel that out. Multiplying by negative 7, dividing by negative 7, and I get x is equal to negative 49. So those are some simple equations with fractions and how to um, solve to get the variable by itself. Remember to circle your answers, and we can plug this back in, plug these back in for x and check them. Right? If I put the numbers back in here for the variable, it should work out. Okay, so how about these next ones? You'll notice that I don't have a 1 on top anymore. Now I might have a different number in the numerator. Well, how do we do those? We're going to still divide by the uh, denominator. And then take that answer and multiply it by the numerator. So let's work out a couple together. If I want to take 2 fifths of 45, I could write this out. I'll show you the long way. 2 fifths of 45. And I could multiply the top, multiply the bottom, or even cross cancel this first, right? And I get 18 over 1. That's one way to do it. That's the long way. That's the way we've done before. Here's a shortcut, though. If I use this shortcut, divide by the denominator, and then take the answer and multiply by the numerator. So 28, negative 28, I'm going to divide by 7. That gives me negative 4. And then multiply it by the numerator. Negative 4 times 5 equals 20. It's another way of working out those fraction problems. Let's do another one. So 27 
divide by the denominator, that would give me 9, multiply it by the 2, and I get 18. I'll do a couple more. Negative 32 divided by the 8, so negative 32 divided by 8 is negative 4, and multiply it by the 3, I get negative 12. Last one that I'm going to do and then you can practice. Make sure you're copying this work down and saying it kind of with me in your head as we do these. So I take the 20, I divide it by the denominator, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and multiply it by the numerator, which is 3, and I get 15. Okay? So you have four more here to try. So show the work, work them out, pause it, and then we'll check together. Okay, I finished the four that you had left. Make sure your work looks like mine. Careful when you have negatives. Still got to carry those along and work them out with the negatives. Okay, so what if I have equations where I've got some fractions and the numerator isn't necessarily a 1? So take a look at these. What if I have something like 3, negative 3 eighths x equals 12? Well, there's two ways. So we're actually going to split this in half and we're going to do a few each way. First method. Go step by step and cancel things out to get the variable by itself. So let's see what that would look like. I'm going to draw my line down the equal sign. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite this. When I see 3 8 or negative 3 8 x, that really means I'm multiplying the x by 3 and it's being divided by negative 8. And that's equal to 12. So I can always rewrite my fraction with the x kind of put in. So I got two things to cancel out. I'm dividing by negative 8, so let's multiply both sides by negative 8 and cancel that out. Bring down your 3x and 12 times negative 8 is negative 96. And then it's one more step. Since I'm multiplying by 3, I would divide by 3. Cancel the 3's out and x is equal to, well, negative 96 divided by 3 is negative 32. And I can always plug this back in. If I plug it in, which you should do on all your homework and on a quiz, plug it back in here and double check it. Make sure it works. Use the shortcut we just did up above to check. Okay, how about one more that way? So 7 eighths times x really means I'm doing 7 times x and then dividing it by 8. And that's equal to 21. Well, to the inverse to undo or cancel out dividing by 8, I can multiply both sides by 8. Cross out what cancels. Bring down what's left. 21 times 8 is 168, right? Then I've got one step. Since I'm multiplying by 7, I can, the inverse of that. So this is for chapter 3. Whoa. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. Forgot where I was now. Okay, it's dividing um, by 7 on both sides, so that cancels out. And x by itself is I can go over and do the math or use a calculator and get 24. Okay, so that's the first method. I want you to practice just that way first. So there's two problems right here. Copy what we did up above, rewrite it, and then you're going to cancel out the division and then cancel out the multiplication in two steps to get the x by itself. So do those and then um, pause and we'll come back and check. Okay, I've done those both here. I rewrote it canceled everything out. I didn't actually cross things out just so you can still read what I have there, but that's what we should get if I keep using that method on those ones. Okay? All right. The other method. Okay, so let's come over here and try the second method. That's to cancel everything all, the whole fraction out at once by using the reciprocal. Okay? So I'm going to still draw my line down the middle. And now when I have a fraction, positive or negative, doesn't matter. If I use the reciprocal, remember the reciprocal means to just flip the fraction upside down. So if I multiply by the reciprocal, let's see what happens. Well, multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2, I could cross cancel those or reduce those. Multiplying by negative 3 and dividing by negative 3 would also cancel out. And all I have left is my x. So in one step, I've canceled out that whole fraction. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So i got to show my work. And now I use that shortcut that we used up here for all of these, right? 12 divided by 2. I can show the work here if I want. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then multiply it by the numerator. 
6 times negative 3 is negative 18. So circle that. I can always plug it back in and check it and make sure it works. Okay, I'll do one more. Draw the line on the equal sign. If I'm multiplying by a fraction, one way to get rid of that is to use the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. Now, before you go too far, make sure everything cancels. A 6 on the top and a 6 on the bottom, 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. Right? All of that would reduce out, simplify out, and I'm just left with my x. So I know it works. And then come over here. Well, negative 20 divided by the 5, that gives me negative 4. And I have to multiply it by the numerator. Negative 4 times 6, negative 24. So this is just a little bit of a shorter method to help you get to the x by itself. Okay? Again, 2 down here. Try these two using the second method. After this, you can pick which way you like better. Some people like doing it this way. Some people would rather do it this way. Um, after this, you get to choose. But pause and try these two down here with the method that we just uh, used. Okay, here's what I got. So I showed the reciprocal on both sides. Cross everything out to make sure it all cancels. Remember, if you have a negative in the original fraction, you're going to want to have a negative in the reciprocal. Same thing here, I had a negative in the original, I need to cancel it with a negative in the reciprocal. So pay attention to your negatives. And then I use the shortcut from up above to work it out and get this answer. Remember to plug this back in. Let's do one together to show how we would check this. If I plug my negative 20 back in here, I'm doing negative 7 fourths times a negative 20. Well, according to my shortcut up there, negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. And negative 5 times negative 7 does make 35. That's right here what we were trying to get, so I know it works. So that's uh, how you can check your answers. All right, flip it over. Got one other quick section to talk about. What if x has a negative in front of it? So if I see something like this. Well, when there's no number in front of x or any variable, we know that there's still an invisible 1. So this actually means negative 1 times x, or this would mean a negative 1 times y. There's still an invisible 1 there if you don't see any number. And we also know that the plus or minus sign, the positive or the negative sign, always goes along. It's glued to the number behind it or after it. Okay, So this negative is glued to that x. That negative is glued to that y. They can't just come apart. So. If we see one of these things in an equation, to undo or to get rid of that negative sign, that negative 1 that's attached to our variable, we're going to divide both sides by a negative 1 to cancel it out. Uh, circle, star, highlight that. You're going to want to know this is how we get rid of if there's a negative in front of our variable. So, a couple examples. Here we go. If I draw my line, that's really a negative 1x being multiplied together. So I divide by negative 1 to cancel it out, bring down my x, and 7 divided by negative 1, I get negative 7. Let's try another one. Think of this as negative 1 times an x. So I divide by negative 1 to cancel it out. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Bring down your x, negative 4 divided by negative 1, positive 4. Okay, I'm going to do one more and then you'll have one to check, or one to finish on your own. Bring down my line. Cancel this out first. A negative 14, I would cancel that by adding 14. Do the inverse so that it cancels out. Cross out what cancels. Bring everything down. Okay, notice that this is still glued together. I still have negative x that I need to bring down. And then 7 plus 14 is 21. So divide that, it's a negative 1 times my x, divide it by a negative 1 on both sides, and x is equal to negative 21. Okay, you try the last one, and then we'll check it. Okay, here's what I got. Make sure you did minus 5 from both sides. Careful with your negatives, bring everything down, and then divide both sides by negative 1 so that you get x by itself. Okay. This actually ends video five. You do not have to do the rest of this practice on the back of this sheet. We'll do it together in class. So you are done with video five.